have a short episode this month as we finish things off with the Trigger Twin Twins with a single issue. Now, this is sort of technically jumping the order, um, but we'll get more into this next month as we do a separate storyline. But I'll just kind of try to sum up. By way of explanation, Night Quest The Crusade took over each of the main Bat books to fit with the idea that Jean Paul, being Batman, was going to become the new status quo. So, because of this, rather than having a single storyline interweaving between each of the Batman comics, as was the case with Nightfall or in the Superman books with Death of Superman, uh, we get something a little different. Um, to maintain the impression of normalcy, you would get standalone storylines in each of the major Bat titles uh, Detective Comics, Batman, and Shadow of the Bat, like you would normally. Um, those stories would be more or less self-contained within that book. We contain minor references to plots and the other ongoings like you'd expect if you're reading Batman comics normally. It's just now instead of Bruce Wayne, it's John Paul Valley. Now you'd have the Night Quest, the Crusade header on top, but that's a vibe with the vibe that in context, it feels like evoking that this isn't a limited event and more something highlighting the new status quo and also kind of playing up to when we go, when we ever we bounce to Night Quest, the search, that's when we're getting to Bruce and Alfred and the hunt for um, Dr. Kin solving and all of that. Now, obviously, with our historical hindsight, we all know that Batman, Bruce is going to become Batman again, but that's once again a ways off. In the meantime, though, we are moving on to Detective Comics number 669. Written by Chuck Dixon, with pencils by Graham Nolan, inks by Eduardo Barreto, arrows by Adrian Roy, and lettering by John Costanza, with edit and edited by Darren Vincenzo and Scott Peterson. The Trigger Twins begin their heist, with the guards cooperating after the guns come out, but the cashier pulls a revolver and ends up getting shot to death. Train to dispatch sends officers, but not before the Trigger Twins get aboard the train, though the officers arrive just in time to see them get on the train and for one of the officers to get shot. Asbat races to intercept in the bat sled, ultimately pulling alongside and leaping onto the roof. He goads one of the twins on the roof and knocks them out, but before taking down the other and finally letting the driver know they can pull in at the next station. Raw. So it's Blades, huh, masked man? Suits me fine. Keeps it more personal. You broke my nose, you son of a... Tom? You okay, huh, brother? Hey. Uh, uh, who are you? I'm the new sheriff. Partner. At the harbor, Danny Doyle is waiting for the twins to show up with the money only to discover the GCPD showing up instead. The issue wraps up with Calvin Berkowitz going to meet the man who called him with a movie pitch. The Joker, he's got a movie to die for. The death of Batman, the motion picture. Uh, Mr. Kerr? Uh, Calvin Berkowitz here from Paragon Pictures. Uh, Mr. Kerr? Act one, scene one, take one. Cameras to speed for filming the making of The Death of Batman. The motion picture. It's a comedy, of course. That's a decent conclusion to this little mini storyline. As far as this version of the Trigger Twins goes, they come off a couple times after this, like a Robin annual issue, that sort of thing, before um, in No Man's Land, before getting killed off in Infinite Crisis. It's a little disappointing on um, the fate for them, those characters. I feel like we could have gotten a little more done to them, done with them. If only as an alternative uh, to the Royal Flush Gang, as a different version of those guys what get beat up while robbing a bank at the start of a storyline, as uh, happens like a Justice League book or that sort of thing. Additionally, for a bunch of guys whose things are that they're quick draws and crack, sh crack shots, why the hell did they never go up against Green Arrow? There's a missed opportunity there, I think. They do get revived post Flashpoint once again as villains as opposed to heroes as the original characters were in the Old West period. This time was part of Flash's Rogues Gallery, which again, I think is a missed opportunity. 
they're guys who shoot guns going up against a guy who's not just faster than a speeding bullet, but faster than the guy whose tagline is that he's faster than a speeding bullet. So, and again, missed opportunity. They feel like if you're not using them with Batman, they'd work better for Nightwing or uh, Green Arrow or, you know, any other character who is more mundane ish um not necessarily a like or if they are super powered aren't super powered in a way that makes them again you know faster than bullets or that sort of thing anyway next time uh asbat takes on another new a completely new villain uh with the tally man and we'll talk about him next time Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.